This short video about the DC link short circuit and grid tied inverters is brought to you by Power on Technology. This short video is about what happens when there is a short circuit across the DC link of a grid tied inverter. Grid tied inverters used to have built in DC link fuses directly at the input to the inverter, as shown in this diagram. This is what a typical grid tied inverter installation looks like. The PV panel array feeds into a three phase inverter. At the input to the inverter is a capacitor bank to filter out the three phase current ripple. This is followed by the six IGBTs with their freewheel diodes and the output filter with inductors and capacitors. The output is connected to the three phase grid. But in recent years, inverter manufacturers started removing this fuse and most grid tied inverters are without this fuse. The reasoning behind this is that the short circuit protection that comes with the IGBT gate drives is fast enough to protect against direct short circuits across any of the three phase output lines. That is true, but leaving out this fuse has unintended consequences, which could lead to damage and possibly be a fire hazard. A direct short circuit can occur across the input lines from the PV array to the inverter, as shown here. The result is that there are three fault currents. The first fault current is through the freewheel diodes of the inverter. The inverter becomes a three-phase rectifier, connected to the grid via the LC filter. The short circuit current flows from the GERD through the filter inductors, freewheel diodes into the short circuit. The current is limited by the filter inductors, which makes the fault more severe, because any series protection in line with the inductors, like fuses or circuit breaker, takes longer to trip because the fault current is most likely in the overload part of the trip curve. The current continues to circulate through the Y-connected filter capacitors. The second part of the fault current is the discharge from the DC link capacitor directly into the short circuit. This capacitor bank is usually quite large, so the peak current is likely to be quite high, but it does not last long. However, the damage due to this discharge current can be quite severe. The third and last component of the fault current is the current from the PV array itself. As shown in a previous video this current can last several minutes before the PV fuse trips. Recent comments received indicates that there are some installations where the PV fuses are being emitted completely, which is no advisable. When the upstream fuses are removed, this PV fault current can flow indefinitely and cause severe damage. This sort video shows that it is advisable to include a fuse at the input to the inverter positive line to avoid possible damage and fire.